Warm welcome to an yet another discussion on gate electronics and communication network related papers. So here we are discussing gate 2015 set 2. Moving to the first question, the voltage VC across the capacitor in volts in the network shown is. So here it is a RLC series circuit and applied voltage is marked as 100 volt. So applied voltage V is split across VR voltage across resistor plus voltage across inductor plus voltage across capacitor. But inductor and capacitor being complex one, we have to actually calculate the mean square value, right? That is 100 square equal to VR, VR is voltage across resistor that is 80 square plus next voltage across inductor that is 40 minus VC, right? VC, the volt square. As both inductor and capacitor consists of complex impedance, we have to take it in this way, right? Now, 100 square is 100,000, 10,000 minus 80 square is 6,400 minus 40 square, 40 square is 1600 equal to VC square minus 2, 2 into 40 into VC. That is 10,000 minus 6,400 minus 1,600 is 7,000, 8,000, so 2,000, right? 2,000 equal to VC square minus 80 VC. Or we can note it as VC square minus 80 VC minus 2,000 equal to 0. From partial fraction Vc minus 100 into Vc plus 20 equal to 0. That means capacitor voltage equal to minus 20 or plus 100. But here capacitor voltage is minus j by omega c into i. So it must be negative 1. That means capacitor voltage is minus 20 volt. So answer is minus 20 volt. Now moving to the next question. In the circuit shown, the average value of the voltage VAB in volts in steady state condition is. Right? So we have to calculate the average value of voltage across this capacitor 1 microfarad. Here this circuit consists of an alternating voltage source and a DC voltage source along with resistor, inductor and capacitor. So in steady state, 5 volt DC, right? 5 volt DC will appear across capacitor and its average value is 5. Being 5 volt DC source, its average value being 5 volt. So, average value due to DC source, due to 5 volt DC is 5, right? But due to this alternating source, the average value will be 0. As it is alternating, both the positive and negative halves are there. So, average value will be 0 right that is average value due to 5 volt ac actually 5 pi volt ac equal to 0 now the total average value is therefore 5 plus 0 equal to 5 so 5 volt is the answer so the answer is 5 volt moving to the third question the two port admittance matrix of the circuit shown is given by right so it is a delta network and we have to calculate the y matrix or admittance matrix so y matrix equal to 1 by resistance right so 1 by 10 plus 1 by 5 that is y11 similarly next parameter that is y12 is 1 by 5 because for this node 1 and node 2 only admittance that is shared is 1 by 5 right again from second node to first node the admittance shared is 1 by 5 right we are taking actually inverse of this impedance or inverse of the resistance that's why we obtain it as 1 by 5 again for the node 2 the total admittance is 1 by 5 right 1 by 5 plus 1 by 10 this is the answer to 
y equal to denominator side 10 so 1 plus 2 is 3 by 10 1 by 5 is 0.2 again here also 0.2 and again here also 3 by 10 3 by 10 is 0.33 so the answer is 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.3 moving to two more questions an lc tank circuit consists of an ideal capacitor c connected in parallel with a coil of inductance L having an internal resistance R. Right? The resonant frequency of the tank circuit is. Right? So we have to calculate the resonant frequency for this circuit. From theoretical part, we know the resonant frequency of this circuit is 1 by 2 pi root LC into square root of 1 minus R square C by L. That is answer is B. Right. Again we can cross check it also. We know if there is no resistor with the inductor the resonant frequency is the nominal resonant frequency that is F0 equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC. So checking the options this may not be the answer because there is a resistance associated with the inductor. Checking next option option C. When we apply R equal to 0, this term turns out to be infinity. So, it is not an answer. Again, uh, coming to option B and D, both B and D satisfy 1 by 2 pi root LC when R equal to 0. But we know there is a square term related with this inductor resistance. Right? So, the answer is B. Moving to the next two mark question. In the circuit shown, we have to calculate the Norton equivalent resistance in ohm across terminals AB. So, in this circuit, there is no independent source. So, Norton current is definitely zero. But Norton's resistance, R Norton, must not be zero. And we have to evaluate it. As there is no independent source, I am applying a test 1 ampere current source at this point. And I am writing node equation for this node. Marking this node voltage as V. Right? Now, writing node equation, first one, V by 2, right, V by 2 plus, next V minus 4i by 2, right, next V by 4, another V by 4. Now, 1 ampere current is entering, so it is equal to 1. Now, applying V, V is the voltage across this forearm, so V equal to 4 into i, or we can mark i as v by 4 now substituting for i in this expression taking common v v into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 4 by 2 4 by 2 is 2 i is v by 4 so 2 by 4 plus v by 4 v is taken common so 1 by 4 equal to 1 so v into 1 by 2 1 by 2 cancelled so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 so 2 plus 1 3 by 4 equal to so v equal to 4 by 3 4 by 3 equal to 1.33 volt so we obtained v v is the voltage across the terminal ab as 1.33 but we know norton's impedance rn equal to voltage by applied current 1 ampere right here we obtained voltage as 1.33 so norton's resistance turned out to be 1.33 oh. Now, moving to the last two mark question in this tutorial. In the circuit shown, the initial voltages across the capacitor C1 and C2 are 1 volt and 3 volt respectively. The switch is closed at time t equal to 0. The total energy dissipated in joules in the resistor R until steady state is reached is. Right? So, the switch is closed at time t equal to 0 and we have to find the energy dissipated or lost in the resistor R until steady state is reached. So, first of all, we have to calculate the initial energy stored in this capacitor combination. So, energy stored in the capacitor is given by half into C V square. Right? So, initial energy stored in these two capacitors, I am marking this as U I, initial energy equal to half into c1 v1 square plus half into c2 v2 square so applying values c1 is 3 v1 is 1 plus 1 by 2 
into c2 is 1 v2 is 3 3 square is 9 so that turns out to be 3 by 2 3 by 2 is 1.5 plus 9 by 2 is 4.5 so the initial energy stored in this combination is 6 joules of energy right so now moving to steady state condition a switch is closed and steady state condition is attained the both capacitor must have equal voltages i repeat after attaining steady state both the capacitor must have equal voltages right so we know cv right v into c1 plus c2 must be equal to c1 v1 plus c2 v2 right here we have to calculate v v is the voltage across the capacitor across any capacitor right so v equal to c1 v1 plus c2 v2 by c1 plus c2 right so here c1 equal to 3 farad v1 is 1 plus c2 is 1 farad v2 is 3 divided by c1 plus c2 that is 4 so this answer is 3 plus 3 6 by 4 6 by 4 is 1.5 volts right so now we can calculate the final energy stored in the capacitor final energy stored in the capacitor is again given by the same initial expression that is half into c1 v1 square plus c2 v2 square but voltage remains same that voltage is actually calculated as 1.5 so 1.5 remains same so half into 1.5 square into c1 plus c2 right that is 1.5 square is 2.25 by 2 into c1 c1 is 3 and c2 is 1 so 4 so that answer is 2.25 into 2 2.25 into 2 is 4.5 so the final energy stored in this combination is 4.5 joules and we have to calculate the total energy dissipated in the resistor r until steady state is reached so until steady state is reached the energy dissipated is equal to this 6 joules minus 4.5 joules right 6 minus 4.5 that is 1.5 joules of energy is dissipated across this resistor right 1.5 joules is the answer for more gate tutorials subscribe my channel so now i am signing out till we meet again with an another gate tutorial thank you